Welcome back. Um, this is the feedback conclusion video to the Sitting Guilds International Spoken ESOL workshop on accuracy. I think the overall conclusion has to be that whatever else we do as teachers, we must make sure that accuracy doesn't become an obsession for learners. Sometimes we need to take off the jacket, loosen the button and relax just a little. Accuracy is important, of course it is but it's not all important. As we saw, accuracy in the test means not just grammatical accuracy, which learners naturally find a challenge, but it's also accuracy in terms of lexis. It's accuracy in terms of language function. It's accuracy not just in terms of structure. It's accuracy in terms of usage. Inevitably, and quite rightly, the emphasis we put on accuracy will change as the levels go up. We saw the names of the different levels. I think that if you are describing yourself as preliminary access or achiever, you take it for granted that mistakes will come in. The very fact that we call the test international spoken ESOL for speakers of other languages tells us that people are not expected to have 100% accuracy. People will of course be influenced by their own first language. If you're describing yourself as a communicator, then I think accuracy is an important part of successful communication. If you describe yourself as an expert or a master in another language, and um, I must say that my accuracy is not high enough in any of the languages that I can use for me to describe myself in that way, but if you do describe yourself as an expert or a master, then you do expect a high degree of accuracy. Um, we also looked at accuracy in the context of the assessment. Accuracy, as many teachers may be surprised to learn, is no more than one quarter, 25% of the overall assessment. I know it wasn't always like that. Even in the test which preceded International Spoken ESO, accuracy was given more weighting. Now, some teachers think that standards are slipping, but most of us, I think, would agree that in terms of communication, accuracy must not be too much of an obstacle. Um, we looked at accuracy in the four parts of the test, and I think it's quite significant that in part one, exchange, sorry, um, where the candidate simply gives personal information, accuracy is important, but will be limited. When it comes to social interaction in part two, the role play, I think that people care less about accuracy. Getting the message across is far more important. Similarly, in part three, where people exchange opinions or facts, as long as the facts and opinions are communicated, that's what matters. Part four of the test, the long term, candidates do have preparation time built in, and therefore a reasonable degree of accuracy is to be expected. It is at least achievable. Um, we looked at accuracy also in terms of errors and mistakes. We do have to face the fact that learners make mistakes. Mistakes, as we saw in the workshop, are generally slips. A slip of the tongue which you or I may make and which I frequently make. Um, errors become ingrained. And sometimes a teacher does, as the Common European Framework suggests, need to consider the action to be taken in regard to mistakes and errors. Common European Framework doesn't give a hard and fast rule on what we should do, nor does sit in guilds, but what we do try to do is to raise the question. Finally, and I think most important, we looked at accuracy in terms of classroom teaching ideas. Uh, I'm indebted to my colleagues and friends at Academic Development. Um, many of my teaching colleagues have helped me with these ideas. They're not all mine, but I do like them. And I have included a wide range of ideas that really do work and really have been proven to help learners to perform with more confidence in the tests. Um, there are many more teaching ideas in the teaching materials. Don't forget we mentioned on the workshop that there are the support materials. There are practice tests so that learners can actually see what it's like to be in that position of a candidate and that teachers can see what it's like to be in the role of interlocutor. 
Um, the City and Guilds website, as you will have noticed, has more and more support for teachers all the time. In conclusion, I think, to this particular workshop, what I would like to say to teachers is don't feel that accuracy isn't an important part of your teaching. It is, and grammar does still matter. But in today's world, and let's face it, what the Common European Framework is all about is the real world, personal, public, occupational, educational. In the real world, what matters is communication, and accuracy is important only insofar as it contributes. Um, if you have seen, or if you'd like to look later at the workshop on writing, you'll see that we take a rather different view of accuracy in the spoken language and in the written. Not saying that it's more or less important in one or the other, it's different. And we as teachers need to communicate this to our learners. Um, don't forget that this workshop is just one of a series. So if you haven't seen the others, but if you find this one useful, then please click onto the others and you'll find we have workshops on the other criteria as well. Range, pronunciation, fluency, communication, as well as accuracy. Well, I hope I haven't made too many mistakes. Um, I'd like to thank you for joining in with this workshop and to wish you every success in your teaching and every success to your candidates. Bye for now. Hope to see you again soon.